Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where it is day four of the Wayne Sharp World Knife of the Year Awards for 2023. And today we are taking a look at what is my personal favorite price category, the price category of $175 to $250. Now, I feel like every year I, I may have a different favorite category. This year though, that 175 to 250, it really, it absolutely flexed. There was so many good models in this category. Uh, it's a longer list than I would have guessed at the beginning of the year. Usually this is kind of a smaller list. We've got like, I think 10, 10 or 11 knives to take a look at in this list because there was some amazing offerings from a really good uh, broad group of brands. There's not, this isn't just going to be a list filled with, with Kaisers or Wee's or one or the other. I mean, there is a nice variety of brands here. And we're going to get into them right now with all of our honorable mentions, starting off with this guy right here, the Giant Mouse Ace Adelaide. Now, if you guys don't know anything about the Adelaide, you may know the Ace Grand. This is basically the Ace Grand in like a mini version. And it is just as amazing as the Grand. I, I do probably personally, if I had to pick one, I think I probably would pick the bigger version just because I like slightly bigger knives. But for a three inch blade, this is one amazing knife coming in at $245 for this particular version. This is the carbon fiber. And I will say the carbon fiber version is my personal favorite. I believe there was titanium carbon fiber. Um, and then I think there was a G10 in Micarta too. There's definitely a Micarta. I think there was a G10 version. All the versions are great. And obviously the Micarta and G10 is a little less, but I thought this was kind of the sweet spot for 245. You get that blue anodized backspacer, the wire clip, and just some amazing carbon fiber that is pretty darn flawless in terms of fit and finish. No chunks, no nothing missing. A uh, really nice pattern and nice, uh, just a really smooth, good grip on this handle. Uh, love the handle and the blade. I mean, it's it's a mini grand blade. It's amazing. Uh, it's pretty slicey. It's got a nice sharp intro down there. Excellent plunge grind. Uh, just a very, very nice knife. And it's a, it's a small knife that feels really good in your hand. It feels like a bigger knife in your hand and it kind of works and acts like one, uh, which has a lot to do with that, uh, that Vox and Anso design aspect to it, uh, which they always knock out of the park. This is a phenomenal knife. The Giant Mouse Ace Adelaide coming in with an honorable mention for this year's Knife of the Year Awards. Uh, next up here is probably one that I think a lot of people may not be crazy about, but I, this is a knife that I didn't think I would like, and I love it. And it's probably like almost a lifetime collection piece for me. This is the Kaiser Huntsman. And the reason I love it is because it's so stinking different, but it's also a very functional blade. Uh, and let's first, let's get straight into the ergos. Actually, let's talk about the price. The price of this guy was $189. Now, unfortunately, the, the Adelaide is in stock. You can find that a lot of places. And of course, there will be links below as there is in all my videos. Uh, but with the Huntsman, it's sold out rather quick and I don't know if more coming back. I really hope they make another run because I think this did a lot better than Kaiser thought. I know a lot of people get turned off by the recurve because there's a lot of people just aren't about recurves. And I'm really not a big recurve guy myself, but the ergos on this thing are just insanely good. And the blade, while it's crazy and out there, it is so damn sweet. And it really is a super versatile blade. You have basically like a, a tanto acting tip here to where you can open packages with that or whatever. It's basically a second tip. Then you have another tip up here that is just a beefy kind of a Oh, just a gnarly, aggressive little blade. Kind of reminds me of like a Grimsmo Norseman a little up towards the top here. Uh, but just a beautiful blade shape. You got some jimping and just some just some nice milling up there to make the blade look a little better. Um, but yeah, the Ergos. The Ergos just win it for me. I love holding this knife in my hand. And it carries, I tell you what, the way this knife carries in your pocket is so good too. Because it comes down at an angle to where... I mean, you're literally only seeing about this much coming out of the pocket and it kind of rides, it, it, when it's going into your pocket, it kind of goes right in the back there and just sits so well in your pocket. There's a lot of little unsung great things about this knife that you won't really know unless you buy it. Um, and the action is another one. I love the action on this. The middle finger flick is phenomenal and the thumb flick is just as great. I mean, this blade flies out. Just, just listen to this. It is so nice. 
Uh, again, highly, highly underrated, not appreciated by, by everybody, but the ones that have had it, I'm sure have a lot of good things to say about it. The Kaiser Huntsman, in my opinion, is a legitimate banger and an amazing knife and an easy honorable mention for this year's Knife of the Year Awards. Uh, next up here, we're going back to Giant Mouse. Giant Mouse had a really strong year this year, and this was another one here. The Ace Yacht, and this is just, this is a little more of a simple, basic design. Doesn't look like a lot of other things, but it's, you know, it's just kind of your, your drop point, you know, your high flat grind, the nice micarta that you get on so many Giant Mouse knives. I love, if you see, I've actually carried this one quite a bit. You got some nice patina going on here in the handle. Um, and it has some milling. There's some there's some very light milling on the micarta, which is very very nice to have in hand. Uh, really nice edge and yeah, just a really good design. It's your it's your typical giant mouse build really in terms of materials. Uh, Magna cut on the blade, which is always a beautiful thing. Uh, nice access to the liner lock, and you can middle finger flick it very easily, as well as of course. Flip it just fine. And again, it's it's any design coming out of Giant Mouse is usually a hit for me. I just, between Anso and Vox, I don't know if those guys have ever come up with a bad design. I mean, they just design beautiful knife after beautiful knife. And the Yacht is just another one of a very long list from Giant Mouse. And it happened to come out this year. So I kind of felt like I had to put it on the list. It's it's a great, great knife uh, coming in at 215 bucks for this. So yeah, 215 bucks for Magna Cut and a Vox and Anso design. Uh, not too bad at all. Not too bad at all there. Uh, really enjoy the Yacht. Uh, and it's not even my favorite Giant Mouse. There is another Giant Mouse coming that is uh, uber impressive, even better than this one. And uh, you will see it here in a little bit. Uh, but we're moving on to another honorable mention. And this one here from Flytanium. This is the Arcade. And this here, now what I'm about to say, I don't mean to throw any shade towards Demco. I think Demco knives are phenomenal. I'm a big fan of them. As a matter of fact, I think the 8020 won my Knife of the Year award a few years back. So nothing but good things to say about them. But I love how Flytanium was able to get the Shark Lock and put it on a design that I really do. I think this design looks considerably better than the AD 20.5. Just my opinion. But it's kind of like, it's almost like a Benchmade bug out in a way. A bigger bug out with a shark lock and a really, really cool micarta inlays on both sides that are interchangeable. You can take them off and, and put in different pieces like this right here. You can replace it with, well, this is the wrong side. Uh, where's the other side? Here it is. You can replace it with a, like carbon fiber, for example. So lots of ways to really customize this. Uh, really, really cool knife. And the shark lock action is just as good as it is on the 20.5. Very fidgety, nice and secure. And yeah, just a really, really nice design from Flytanium. Uh, one of their first attempts, I, yeah, I think it's their, well, maybe technically their second if you include the balisong. Uh, but in terms of a non-balisong, I believe this is their first attempt at a folding knife. And uh, I am a fan. This is right around the 200-ish dollar mark. It ranges a little between which version you want. Uh, but a great knife, nice and light, carries good in the pocket. Uh, there's really nothing to knock on it. I mean, it's very solid. S35 VN steel on the blade, uh, Fidget Bliss with that shark lock. Demko brought one amazing gift to the knife community with his shark lock. I gotta say, he uh, he he changed he changed the game with that shark lock. He really really did. Uh, love me the Flytanium Arcade. Definitely one I would recommend, and definitely a worthy honorable mention this year. Uh, next up is a rather new one. I just reviewed it a little while ago. Uh, shocked the hell out of me. The Concept Cosmos, designed by Paul Munko. Uh, this specific model is coming in at $199, but I believe there is a Micarta version that's coming in at like $169 or $179, so right around that $175 mark. Uh, this is one of the smoothest concepts, one of the best executed concepts I've ever handled. Probably right up there uh, with the Integra, which I just reviewed recently as well. Uh, just an amazing knife. Great design from Paul Monko. Love the finish on this copper carbon fiber. And this flipper tab could have been an absolute disaster and ruined the knife. 
And it turned out to be one of my favorite things about the knife. It's so, so easy and enjoyable to flip this blade out. Uh, nice, aggressive, warny, nice milled clip back there. I like how they bronzed the clip and left the bolster area raw. It just, it, it, it all goes so well. Ergos are very nice. Uh, easily one of the best concepts I've ever handled. And between this and the Integra, I am very, very excited to see what Concept has in store for 2024. Uh, they could have themselves quite a year if they keep hitting on their designs and uh, and working with the right people. I feel like their designs have kind of been what's held them back in the past. Uh, but they have some good things coming. And they do have some other good designs. They have a design with Marshall Noble, uh, uh, Justin Lundquist. They do have some other good designs. Uh, but this one here really kind of, I feel like, put them back on the map, for me at least. The Concept Cosmos, a really, really nice knife. Easy honorable mention for this year's Knife of the Year Awards. Uh, and next up, we are taking a look at a Monterey Bay. This here is the Rosalinda. And I think I'll say it again. It's the first thing I said about this knife when I reviewed it. This is by far and away the best knife to ever come out of Monterey Bay Knives. Uh, they've always had great designs. One of the issues I've had with them from time to time was soft detents. This one is a li little on the lighter side, but still very acceptable. I really, what I wish they would have done was just put a little, uh, put some jimping right up here because you can still you can still front flip this rather easily but a little jimping there would have been so nice they didn't really intend for this to be a front flipper but i kind of wish it was um and i wish this detent was just a hair stronger just a hair but oh man i tell you what this knife the action on this thing is let's see here guillotine there it is an absolute guillotine of a blade very very smooth we're looking at a price of 235 dollars and you have a laminated blade here i believe this is zdp 189 that's ooh, ooh, i about got myself there uh that's laminated on the bottom here and it's the hrc of this zdp 189 is like i believe it was like 67 hrc so super super hard gonna hold a really nice edge and just a beautiful blade shape very very classy, very classy gentlemanly knife, but it's also big. So it's it's definitely a big knife that I think a lot of people would appreciate the size of. Um, if I remember right, this is named after Ray Laconico's mother, which is a beautiful name, Rosalinda. Um, and as you can see, it's got the Ray Laconico maker's mark up there. Um, and yeah, just a very, very solid knife. This, I believe, is also sold out. I would think at some point there's definitely going to be another run of these, though, because they sold rather well and they sold out relatively quickly. Um, I believe when I got mine, they were, they were only available for another day or two and then they were out. So uh, great knife from Monterey Bay Knives, the Monterey Bay Rosalinda. Uh, where are we at here? Next up. We've got another name that you've seen on the channel and heard in the Knife of the Year Awards before, and it is Cons or Concept. We did hear about Concept, but this is actually a Vosteed. This is the Vosteed, Vosteed Daxon. Now, I totally, or Daxon, I totally, like, demolished the name of it in my review. I called it the Dashend. Um, sometimes pronunciation is just not my strong point, but luckily there's viewers like you to tell me when I'm wrong. So, being the Daxon, uh, this is one amazing knife. One of my favorite premium offerings from Vosti to date. Uh, they obviously don't have a lot, but they do have more coming, I promise you that. Uh, but just really, really nice, clean design, nice flowing lines, really nice ergos for the handle shape. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like how this knife feels in hand. I love how this knife feels in hand. Feels great, excellent blade shape, got a nice aggressive tip up there, all the swedges to really pull everything together. Really nice, smooth crossbar lock action. And of course, front flipper, it's reach around approved and it's very easy to front flip. So very nice knife coming out of Vosteed. You got a nice milled clip, which I wrecked on a corner when I was taking a corner too quick at work, not paying attention. And your boy's got some wide hips. So I clipped a corner. What can I say? But it's okay. It doesn't look too bad. And hey, little love on a knife. Never hurt anything. We're looking at M390 steel on the blade. And yeah, great, great knife. Uh, ranging from, let's see here, 209 to 229, depending on the version you get. And may, or I think that was the sale price. Yeah, I think it originally came out at 229 and maybe 209 was a sale price. So yeah, expect to pay somewhere between 209 to 229 on it. Uh, but just, yeah, just a really amazing knife all around the Vosteed Dachshund. 
And next up here, we have two awesome knives to round out our honorable mentions. And then we're going into our top three. And uh, this guy right here was one of the biggest surprises of the year for me from Artisan Cutlery. This is the BOA. And this was a Kickstarter that uh, Artisan Cutlery did. And it had massive success. I don't think it could have went any better than they thought it would. And it's a great design. I mean, this is so different. This is something to where when you first look at it, you might be like, uh, I don't know if that design's for me. But I tell you what, once you get it in hand and the ergos are so awesome on this. Such solid ergos. And the thumb studs, the front flipper. If you've ever, if you've ever used the uh, or handled the React Tribute, very much like the Riot Tribute here in terms of action for the front flipper. Uh, very, very easy to kick that blade out. Very smooth, very present, noticeable detent. And of course, you can even metal finger flick it. It's just, it's got everything in terms of deployment. It's a fidget beast. Uh, just a great design by uh, basically a kid. I think the kid was like 17, 18 years old. I apologize, I can't remember the name. Is it on here somewhere? Uh, what does that say? No, ah, the name's not on here. Unfortunately, it, it is a uh, uh, went out of my memory. Uh, but it will of course be linked below, and there'll be more information about it. Uh, but the boa is fantastic. I really don't know if it's still available. Of course, if it is, the links will show that. Uh, but yeah, it is just a great little knife if you're looking for around that three inch blade shape. Uh, love how it feels. Nice clip. Uh, great micarta inlay. There's also a blacked out version. I'm usually not like, usually the blacked out version isn't my first option, but I really love the blacked out version of this with carbon fiber inlay. Same styles of inlays on both sides. So they're nice and full and they kind of help protect some of the frame lock. So you don't have to worry about putting too much pressure on the frame lock or anything. It's nice, consistent, smooth, enjoyable action. Uh, just a phenomenal knife. These came in at one hundred and ninety nine dollars, and it's another, another 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 jewel in the crown of artisan cutlery, uh, who has had themselves one amazing year, and I mean amazing from from budget up to premium. Uh, artisan cutlery has slash CJRB uh, has really 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 impressed, and the boa is a premier prime example of just that the artisan cutlery boa and last up we have an honorable mention this knife was in the top three for so long and it just kind of got edged out towards the end this is the Wee knives hyphen coming in at 246 dollars and 50 cents so it was just under that 250 dollar mark and you could have maybe got it on sale and saved a little more but this thing here, in terms of three inch blades, which this is a three inch blade, maybe just a hair under, one of my all time favorite three inch blades in the history of knives. Like I love this design. I believe it's a, it's gotta, yeah, it's gotta be a Gavco design. Uh, it is just incredible. All the lines on this are just stunning. Love the black blade with the antique bronze finish. And the ergos on this thing are too good. I mean, that right there is one happy hand. And then you go a little farther back, happy hand. That's, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll forget I said that and just move on here to keep talking about this knife and, and nothing else but the knife. <laughs> yeah, really nice ergos, nice contoured titanium there. Uh, excellent lockup on the frame lock and just everything about this knife was knocked out of the park. Wicked hollow grind, nice ridiculously slicey tip and uh, thumb studs that are good for middle finger flicking or of course, as you saw, just that regular thumb flick. Excellent, excellent knife. Uh, one of my all time favorite Wii's and like I said, easily one of my favorite three inch blades of all time, the Wii Knives Hyphen designed by Gavco Knives. And now we are in our top three. And coming in at third place, this was a knife that was originally a budget knife that Caviso made an amazing premium version of. This is the Wii Knives Caviso Exclusive Praxis. Coming in at 212 bucks. And it may be on sale right now if there's still some left. I thought for sure these things were gonna sell out like in one day and somehow some magical unbeknown way to me there was still some of these in stock a little while ago now i don't know if there's any more still in stock and there really shouldn't be there really should not be any of these in stock because this is 
by far my favorite Praxis. I mean, yes, premium's always nice, but the milled titanium is so good. It's a little thinner of a handle. There's a lot of internal milling, so as big of a knife as this is, it's a very light knife. While I don't have the exact weight, for as big as this knife is, uh, it is noticeably light in the hand, very well balanced. And if you haven't noticed yet, they did another thing to this knife that you don't see on a lot of the other Praxis's. And I'm looking over to my what right. Here it is. I'm trying to find another Praxis. So here's a Praxis. As you can see, they added thumb studs. And thumb studs on a Praxis go together like peanut butter and chocolate. Um, they should, how they never put thumb studs on the first Praxis's was just out of my, like, I'll never understand that. Uh, but this one is the only version with thumb studs, and they are perfect. Ridiculously slicey blade, got the same great choil. Everything about this knife is amazing. Premium for $212 or less if it's on sale. Uh, you really cannot beat this. I mean, well, technically you can because there is a second, uh, there's two other knives that I have ahead of this. But if you like the Praxis, this is the best Praxis. And this is also one of my favorite Wii's. I mean, this is for 212 bucks too. That's a really good price for a Wii knife. Uh, and it definitely feels like a Wii. Super smooth, super good. Everything about it is perfect. The only thing that I would, if they were to do these again, the only thing that I would maybe change on this would be the clip. I, I, I would definitely put a different clip on there. But the clip still works great as is, fully recessed. So it does have some positives to it. Um, but that's the only thing I would change about this knife. This knife is fantastic, amazing, 212 bucks. Really, really good deal for a Wii knife and an excellent knife coming in at number three. On the Knife of the Year Awards for 175 to 250 the Wii Knives could be so exclusive. Praxis. Uh, and now we are going back to Giant Mouse, and we're going to talk about the Giant Mouse that just had every part of me loving this knife. This is the Giant Mouse Knives Ace Tribeca. Now, before I go any further, I have to tell you guys, obviously, this is the titanium version. So the titanium version is actually $285. So it's technically out of this price range, but this Tribeca here, you can get this Tribeca in G10 or Micarta for $215. So while I do have the $285 version, it's the only one I have, and I wasn't about to spend $215 just to give you a visual. So I will have the Micarta and G10 versions linked below, and of course I'll have the premium version below if you want it. Uh, but I do honestly think, while I love, and I mean love this version, uh, the titanium version, I do think the G10 and Micarta version is considerably a better value for $215 compared to $285, just my opinion. Uh, I would definitely go the G10 or uh, Micarta route on that. And yeah, for $215, you get a great handle, phenomenal, like perfect ergos. These are up there with the Shaman for some of the best ergos of all time. I love, love, love these ergos. Uh, you get a CPM Magna Cut blade, and yeah, you just get all the rest of the uh, the badass stuff that you like about Giant Mouse knives. I mean, it definitely feels just like a Giant Mouse knife, um, and it's a very sleek, kind of a smaller design, excellent middle finger flicking action. I can't get past how much I love these Ergos. I could literally just talk about how good this knife feels in the hand without telling you guys anything else. Uh, but it is an amazing knife. And for $215 for the G10 or Micarta version, uh, I think it's a great value and one that if you're looking for a knife in that in that three inch range, I think the blade itself is like 3.15 inches maybe, but the, the cutting edge is definitely a little less than three inches. But that choil is worth it, guys. Amazing, amazing knife. The Giant Mouse Knives, Ace Tribeca, coming in at number two in the Knife of the Year Awards for this price category. And now we come to our champion of this price category. And this one here, just, th this was taking a knife, ver a knife model and really perfecting it for me. And uh, Vosteed took this Thunderbird and they made it just a hair shorter. I mean, just a hair shorter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, gave it titanium handles, or titanium, a titanium handle with LMAX steel. Uh, this is the Thunderbird tie. And it's technically not called the Mini. It's technically just called the Titanium Thunderbird. 
uh, but it is a little shorter than the regular Thunderbird. I don't have another Thunderbird within arm's reach of me, or I would do a side by side, side by side comparison, but you'll have to take my word for it. Uh, but it feels great in the hand. This is the perfect Thunderbird in my opinion. And if, if you guys have watched my channel at all, you'll know I love the Thunderbird. It's easily at this point my favorite Vosti knife. Like it's just, it's from a fidget standpoint, from an ergonomic standpoint, from a design, at fidget design, I can't remember what I said. Uh, everything about this knife like wins it for me. I, oh, it's so, so good. Nice slicey hollow grind on the flat and a flat grind up towards the top. Uh, the choil is just enough to get a good grip on it. And of course you can do all the fidgety things, whether you are flipping, flicking, front flipping, middle finger flicking, whatever it is, you can do it with this knife. Great detent, excellent detent. I actually have the newest version of this coming my way and I cannot wait to do the unboxing with you guys because I'm very, very excited about it. Keep an eye out for that, it's coming up and I think I'll probably be doing a giveaway with that unless something changes, but I'm planning on doing a giveaway, not of that exact knife, but a, a giveaway through Vosteed. So that will be exciting. Um, but yeah, the Vosteed Thunderbird tie, it, it just hit all the right spots for me. And for 199 bucks, it's just a really solid deal. I mean, a really solid deal. And if you're a lefty, they got that nice uh, filler tab there for you. So you don't have that ugly hole on the other side of the knife. If you want to go lefty with it, you can easily do that and it'll still look really good. And I mean, look at this, just an amazing design. Uh, this was a very, very tight race for this category. There is a lot of really, really good knives. And I, I'm sure there's going to be people in the comments saying, oh, I think the boa or this or that or something else should have uh, have been the best knife. And you know what? I'm probably not going to disagree with anyone because, like I said, there was so, so many options. The Ace Tribeca was at number one. The, the Praxis was at number one. I had a lot at number one for quite a while. Um, yeah, and this is just such a strong, strong, strong category. Let me know, guys, which one is your favorite from this price category. <clears throat> and I don't think, let's see, I, I, I've really enjoyed the challenge of trying to get all these knives on the screen. And I don't think it's happening with this one because we got a lot of really good sized knives. Well, you know what? Never say never. Never say never. Thank you, Atelier, for being small, Adelaide, and there it is. There you go, guys. In my opinion, these knives right here are the best knives you can get in 2023 for $175 to $250. Congrats to Vosti. Congrats to all these manufacturers. They crushed this price category. I loved reviewing these knives, and I got two more days to bring you guys. I cannot wait to do it, and then we will crown a champion on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.